So we'll move into a practice called the 18 form, Shibashi. It's a Qigong form that has its tradition in Tai Chi. So it was brought together by um, a Qigong master called Ling Ho Shun, um, relatively recently actually in 1979. Um, but its origin dates back hundreds of years. So it is more a meditative flow of movements, of 18 movements, which we'll do one after the other. And we're just inviting that sense of med meditative flow. So moving smoothly and easily, softening the joints, not locking any of the elbows or knees, and um, letting one movement flow into the next. And we'll be exploring different aspects of them as we move. So uh, the first one, we can just start um, by bringing the palms to the sides of the body. And then we sink the tailbone back and down as the arms rise up to the chest. And then as we lift the crown of the head, palms float back down to the sides. And you sink, tailbone back, palms rise, lifting, and the arms and palms float back down. So it has this nice two-way directions as one part of the body is rising, the crown, the palms are lowering, as the tailbone is lowering, the arms are rising. So this is called harmonizing the chi. It's uh, said to benefit the, um, the liver meridian. So generally when we feel stressed, it tends to relate to the flow of smooth chi through the liver meridian. So by lifting our arms here, we're activating space under the arms and through the top of the abdomen. So sitting back and rising. You can think of doing about six of these movements in a traditional practice, six of each. But we'll explore them a little bit longer today. So sitting back, letting the tailbone descend back and down, and then lifting the crown as the palms lower down. We don't want to lean forward, so we want to lean back, protecting the knees, and we're straightening up again. Always moving at a pace that feels easy for the body. We change, we move into opening the chest, palms rise up front to the chest and palms look up, opening out to the sides and down. As we sink in the knees as well, the whole body matching, expanding and opening and then lowering down the centre line, the sides of the body and the centre lowers with them. So we rise and open opening the chest, the rib cage, and lowering down, bending the knees. So the open palms activates the uh, lung meridian, the heart meridian, heart protector, as well as opening space in the chest, the rib cage. So linking your breathing with these movements as you move up and opening the arms we inhale as we lower down the sides we exhale and just keeping the arms as well forward of our shoulders so they're still in our peripheral vision so we're not um, over stretching the chest the chest stays soft it doesn't extend out it stays soft broadening our back relaxing down. And from there we lift the arms, the zigzag one of the feet out, a little bit wider into horse stance. And you can, if you like, turn the toes out slightly, this movement called dancing the rainbow. So as we yield and lean to one side, we're opening the arm down along the side of the body. So bending the knee and leaning towards the straight leg. We're thinking here of uh, either side of a rainbow in the palm of the hand, 
And as one side lowers, the other side rises. It's also uh, relates to the earth element. So lowering down, we're activating the spleen channel, relates to the earth element. And our digestion, our physical energy, but also our sense of um, strength and balance, our own groundedness. So just opening, bending, and leaning towards the straight leg, gazing down at the lower palm, keeping our eyes focused on the lower palm. And as we come back up to centre, we begin settling back into, stepping back in, shoulder width. Crossing the arms in front, the dentian, opening overhead and letting the palms float back down the outsides of the body, crossing again in front, up the front of the body and opening. And this movement is called separating clouds. So again, it activates uh, the lungs, the heart, meridian lines. And also our nervous system. So a felt sense of stress or overwhelm or feeling down. It has a traditional use for uh, depression. And um, overwhelm in our thinking. We're overstimulated. And just inviting the separating these clouds, any cloudedness in our thinking, any cloudedness in our experience. And Qigong has a very long traditional use of intention. It's called Yi in Chinese, and the expression Yi Dao, Qi Dao. So where your intention goes, Qi follows. So it, it's not um, a light-hearted use of intention, it's quite a focused uh, skill. So by using your intention to separate that clouds, any cloudedness or heavy clouds weighing over us, you're bringing your chi to that focus. So you're empowering that action to have an impact on your energy system. So I invite you to really um, explore the use of intention while doing these movements. And you can keep a little gap between the arms as we rise up and open. And relaxing down, bending the knees very gently, separating the clouds as the palms come down to the sides. We move into a movement called rolling ball. One palm moves forward, the other palm moves back. And as I pull the front palm towards me, the back palm rolled like throwing a ball over the shoulder and forward, pushing. This movement is based on the Tai Chi movement of Repulse Monkey. It's called Rolling Ball here in the 18 form, Shibashi. Pulling and pushing. Opening to the chest. It's also said to benefit the liver. So this movement of Qi through the liver, smooth flow. Um, the liver is considered to relate to our overall emotional lives, but particularly in traditional Chinese medicine, every organ is associated with a particular emotion. The emotion of the liver being a frustration or um, anger, aggression, impatience, all those things we all feel. So any opening we can do, particularly here as we open to the side from the waist, creating an openness in the organ, and also the liver channel running up through the inside of the legs. And from there, we lower the palms down. And to row a boat in the heart of a lake, 
So sinking the tailbone back and down, we form loose fists and circle in towards the waist, the sides of the body, forward, sinking back as we row a boat. So here this is said to be very beneficial for the kidneys and the back generally. We're thinking of lengthening the spine, the lower spine back and down and straightening up through the back of the neck. Lengthening. And you can also modify as you need depending on your back strength and being gentle with your own capabilities. You can simply open the palms, stay more upright, circling the arms overhead and floating the palms down the front. Again, lengthening through the spine and modifying as you need to. So this, the meditative aspect of these movements are, it's as important as the physical aspects. Very good. And from there, we're going to bring the left palm behind the back so it looks up. So the tiger's mouth, the area here, is coming towards the back and the palm looks up. I'll mirror you here, so we'll move towards the left. And I shift my weight, turn and lift my palm, open palm up to the side. Then I sink back towards the centre, shift the weight across, turn, and then lifting the palm and keeping the shoulders dropped, like offering, the palm offering. And keep my connect in here again to the centre, shift the weight across and lift. Keep the central body uh, still aligned and centred so I'm not following my palm, lifting, benefiting the, the waist, the kidneys again, either side of the spine, rotating. And using the moment in the centre to bend the knees to really connect the feet to the ground before lifting again and lifting up onto the heel. So they shift the weight across and rise and lifting the opposite heel. And we finish on the right. This time, as you come back to the centre, pick up the other palm with you. Same movement through the feet, lifting the but here, the arms rise up to the corner, focusing on the moon. So it's called gazing at the moon, pulling down, gathering, gazing upwards again to the corner. The two palms moving more in unison, shift the weight across and lift. So we're thinking of this um, water element for this movement again and also earth related to the spleen and our digestion and um, modify the level of rotation through the spine based on what feels right for your body so no need to go around as far as I'm going just modify as you need. I'm finishing then on the right. And we'll come back towards the centre. Lower palm looks up at the dentian. The top palm turns and pushes across the dentian. So we're back into shoulder width. We turn and rotate the palms, turning the waist and pushing out to the side. Turn waist, push palms. So this really is a in, more internal focus movement, thinking of 
activating the lower abdominal muscles, the core muscles of the lower back, the abdomen and the top of the legs, so the psoas muscle in particular, many of those lower abdominal muscles as well. And I'm focusing more on keeping the hips aligned forward and just moving the waist. So as I turn, hips stay forward, but the waist is turning. So you're trying to distinguish between the two, strengthening the core. Very a powerful effect too on our sense of grounding in our own bodies. Feeling more centered, grounded in our movement. The more we bring our energy down towards uh, the Dantian, the more we have that sense of groundedness. So turning and push palms. We move into a movement called weaving hands in the clouds. Again, this is a traditional Tai Chi movement, particularly Yang style Tai Chi. The two palms connect like a ball over the foot and then they swap. And as I move towards the right, the right palm leads across the chest, lower palm underneath the dantian. Momentarily they form a ball before swapping again and cross. So I'm a little bit in front of the body for this, more flowing movement said to benefit our Nerve, the overall nervous system, getting a sense of flow and relaxation in our movement, waving hands in the clouds. They compare a lot of the time Tai Chi and Qigong to uh, elements in nature, waving hands in the clouds or flying thinking a lot of water, flowing streams. So this movement, that's, you see this shape and movement and round flow through the entire nature. It's more round in its flow. Our movements stay round, shoulders stay dropped, elbows round, knees soft. The crown always lifting and the tailbone descending down. And finish on the right. Just turning that right foot out slightly. Opening the palms as we step forward. And from here, little forward movement into the front foot. And then we fold forward, cross the arms and sink into the back foot. So we open the arms down the sides. Shift the weight forward, crossing and opening. This is a movement called touch the sea and look at the sky. Quite two opposite uh, forces of yin, so the coolness of the sea and then the open, more uh, bright vastness of the sky. So the dark coolness and the, the warm heat of the day, daytime, some summer and heat. So just careful not to fall too far forward. You can make the movement again as small as you need. As you bend into the back foot, let that knee go towards the outside of the foot. When we're ready to change, opening the palms. Step in, sink the weight across, step and forward and fold again. Touch the sea and look at the sky. I'm not moving into a back bend here. I'm just looking up, thinking of the open sky nature. And this also benefits the lungs, the heart, the openness of the upper body, the flow of movement through that part of the body. Leaning 
into the front foot, protecting the knee and opening. We change again as we open. We swap the feet, draw that foot back in, step out and forward. Front foot straight ahead and back foot to the corner. So we roll forward, the palms come in front of the body. As we move into the back, come up, lift the front toes. And as we open, we breathe in. And forward, and breathe out. Dove exhibiting wings. So that bird opening its wings wide, displaying its beauty. Openness for the lungs and the chest again, the heart here. Metal element, particularly metal element is associated with the lungs. So the lung meridian runs along the insides of the arms, right out to the thumb, as we step in and change. So we're thinking of not only are we opening the chest, but we're activating that uh, meridian line. So feel that along the insides of the arms as you move. Again, keeping the arms in front of the shoulders so they're not going too far back. You still need to see them and not straining your shoulders. Dove exhibiting wings. A little look from the side. Weight going forward, and then the weight shifting back as we open. Crown lifting. Nice flowing movement. And back. And from there, into change, into a movement called pushing waves. So water element movement. So you push the waves from low down in the waist. Then palms look down as we retract them back in towards the body. Forward we push. Breathing in as we retract and breathing out as we push forward, pushing waves. Think of this as uh, like the tide. So as the the ocean moves the tide out to the shores and then retracts it back in to the ocean. And we retract back in, change, sink the weight across the other foot, step out forward, pushing waves. You can have small waves, you can bring the rolling forward and back, lifting the heels and toes, if you like, bringing the wave up higher. But I invite you also to experience the two feet on the ground, pushing waves out to the shore and then retracting back into the center. And water element and it's said to link to our kidneys and the emotion linked to kidneys is fear and also the the greater attribute of the kidneys is said to be wisdom so whenever there's wisdom fear dissipates because we're living through we have lived through experiences our life experience has taught us wisdom and insights and leaning on that leaning on those experiences fear cannot live but that's the higher quality of the water element and we step in we bring the feet together 
And open the arms out to the sides and up, floating up to the sides and down. Wild goose flying. And again, a metal element. And think of the sides of the rib cage expanding out. More space for the lungs, for the breathing mechanism. Think of the undersides of the arms, lifting the arms as we breathe in and floating back down as we breathe out. Wild geese are thought to have these qualities of fidelity and longevity, poise and grace. So as the crown lifts and the tailbone descends, just leaning on that strong center line up through the back and feeling into that sense of poise and integrity, inner strength, letting that spread out through the rib cage. One more. We step out to the side and palms form loose fists at the waist and we sink and punch towards the middle around stomach height, punching with an angry gaze. So here related to the wood element, the liver, gallbladder, organs, thinking of dissipating any aggression or anger through our system, any excess anger. So we all uh, get petty annoyances and when things don't go our way or the way we'd like, in the time we'd like, and just releasing any of that impatience and sense of complaining about how things are. Just uh, inviting an openness through the liver organ. So the liver is related to wood and wood, we see it in the trees and plants, they have this incredible ability to grow around obstacles, to find their way through and around difficulty. So as we punch, release as we exhale. We're inviting that creativity through the system and also the higher qualities of the wood element and the liver would be it's really a generous leadership and taking action on behalf of everyone, punching. Not just taking action on our own behalf but what's What's the higher action we could take for the good of all? And as you turn the waist slightly here, see if you can sense on the right hand side, the top of the abdomen, I'm mirroring you here, just space uh, where the liver organ is located, creating um, more space for movement there. And also, if we're too meek, if we're not um, strong enough, we're deficient in our liver energy. So calling in that sense of uh, confidence to speak our truth when we need to. Bringing up our strength in our own convictions and balancing the excess or deficiency in that liver organ. Very good, folks. So we're going to move into a movement as we let fold forward. A movement called turning the big wheel. So open palms or loose fists, whichever feels comfortable, like turning a big wheel. Folding forward. Again, just fold as much as feels comfortable. We're going to do three turns of the big wheel and you can just stay more upright if you need to if you have any lower back issues 
and just turning. Or you can fold further forward, keep, keeping the knees soft. After you've done three, we'll change. As you look up, just let the tailbone go forward and down, protecting the lower back. Circling, turning big wheel. Open is through the sides of the body. They're bending the knees and slowly straightening up the body, one vertebrae at a time. And lastly, the neck. We move into our bouncing ball. This comes from a Tai Chi movement, a principle here of moving each side of the body as one unit. So the palms link to the feet, or the elbows link to the knees, like a puppet moving. So we sink, shift the weight across, and then lift. Linking each side of the movement. It's a more playful movement. Kids love doing this one. And then once you have that going, we change. Swap. Opposite palm to knee or to foot. Lifting the ball, but grounding in the center. So you're moving from solid feet a great balance movement exercise, good for the nervous system, but also developing these left-right brain connections in our neural pathways. And relax down. And lastly, then our closing form. We circle the palms out and overhead and down the center line. So it's inviting ourselves to regulate our breathing again. If we've worked a bit, the breathing rhythm and the heart rate has built up, which is inviting that to regulate, come back to balance. Also just gathering all the benefits to those organs and systems and meridian lines, the chi pathways through the body, or what's called the rivers of chi. Inviting yourself to center in again and down to the lower dentian. Palms move, connecting the thumb and the first finger into a diamond or heart shape down towards the dentian. I invite uh, ladies put the right palm first and then the left on top and opposite for men. And I'm mirroring you here. And always lifting that crown upwards, the crown more towards the back of the center of the head, chin more tucked in, tailbone reaching downwards and the feet grounded. <laughs> 